Social media, falsified ideals, and the power of vulnerability. The research question being, is exposing our flaws online and advocating for inclusion a plausible solution to increase youth suicide rates from unrealistic expectations online? Firstly, what does that mean? Well, while the negative impacts of social media may not be surprising to many, what could be shocking to a few is that according to Sprout Worth, a data collection site, in 2022, 4.95 billion people spent an average of over two hours a day on social media, an exponential growth curve compared to when social media first started gaining traction back in the late 2000s, a growth curve which has coincided with the largest spike in teen suicide rates that we have ever seen before, shown by this graph from the CDC. According to Jamie Zalanzi, an assistant professor at Pittsburgh School of Medicine, suicide is the second leading cause of death among individuals aged 10 to 24 years. Further, suicide rates have tripled among youth aged 10 to 14 years, coincided with rising rates of social media use. With cold art statistics staring us in the face, it is obvious that there is a problem. However, pointing our finger in the general direction of social media isn't good enough. As according to Amy Roeder from Harvard TH Chan School of Public Health, Social media can actually have positive implications in terms of mental health and can foster a greater sense of communication and connection between users online. The clear disparity between the potential for social media to do good as well as the actual impact on youth begs the question of, is there a deeper problem? What is the true problem with social media? Rafat Era Bonet, a social media platformer and marketing associate for management advisory, essentially an insider into the world of social media, says, yes, there is a deeper problem and its unrealistic expectation. She goes on to clarify that social media encourages users to display only the best version of themselves online. This leads to the creation of false and perfected personas which are only displayed due to the fact that they are concealing one's own individuality. This concealing of indiv individuality puts a pressure on others to conform to this due to the fact that their peers and as well as their role models are all showing this larger than life lifestyle portrayed online leading to a loop of conformity and peer pressure, spreading this culture's influence more and more. However, this is a universal problem with social media, but it is of special importance to adolescents due to the fact that, according to Philip R. Constanzo, a PhD in psychology, in agreement with hypothesis, conformity increased to adolescence and decreased after adolescence, showing that youth are blindly obedient to unrealistic expectations because of the fact that they believe it is a social norm which they must follow if they are to remain cool. However, rather than maintaining their status as cool, what it actually does is hide their individuality and lead to a spiral of self-hate and doubt which eventually ends up in the increased youth suicide statistics which we have previously mentioned. The core controversy as for why youth are conforming is best addressed by Marcus Thompson II, an editor for The Athletic, while describing Simone Biles' journey with accepting the field. He says, that's the adversity most commonly faced in, vul in modern society, vulnerability, the ability to look truth dead in the eye and not blink, to accept the repercussions of being raw and real. Teenagers are severely lacking in an ability to accept their own imperfections, which is why they're so blindly obedient and trying to follow these perfectionistic ideals and trends online. Which is why the solution is to promote vulnerability, to create a safe space for these teenagers to express their own individual beliefs without having to fear the censure or the backlash of others. While there have been many solutions proposed many times over for many different problems on social media, the importance of user action and user free will is demonstrated by Ted Thomas, the Director of Department of Command and Leadership, and Ira Chalith, President of Executive Coaching and Consulting Associates, who say that a critical application of moral courage is knowing when and how to disobey, which is also known as intelligent disobedience. This involves an ability to work within the system to maintain standards and uphold moral values. Essentially, while it may seem scary and while it may seem inefficient to put adolescents in the scrutiny of the public eye. It is only by encouraging them to take the first step in abolishing unjust, unrealistic expectations themselves can we have permanent and progressive momentum towards a more mentally health-friendly social media. Which leads to the culmination of all this leading to a media movement for inclusion. The main pro of this is that social media has proven time and time again that it is very good at spreading advocacy. As according to Kay Lotha from the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Increasing mental health awareness with the help of social media can be a good initiative to reach out to a large number of people in a short time frame. In the same capacity social media excavated unrealistic expectations, it can also spread a movement for positivity, for change. And in the long run, such movements could lead to a reform of social media itself. 
seen by Kate Averett, a senior journalist, who points to HelpHow as a platform designed to be tech for good, essentially showing how AI could be used to stop cyberbullying and how platforms could be used to promote individuals to express their individuality in almost any way they see fit. This is the end goal of such a movement. However, as with any major movement, there are also major drawbacks. The first and most obvious being backlash. Inevitably, there will be people who believe such a movement is unnecessary. There will be people who believe, who believe that it's an overreaction, that it's not the right response. And this fear of backlash leads to many more people not joining in the movement due to the fact that they fear direct opposition from those who do oppose this movement. And secondly, and most crucially, there will still be trends and influencers even with this movement. This movement doesn't do anything to restrict or disadvantage the current status quo. Rather, it offers user an option between maintaining the status quo or choosing the riskier, the more, the riskier route of accepting themselves and being vulnerable. But this one could promote more inclusion. However, in general, due to the, all these flaws, a media movement could potentially fizzle out or not even stick the landing in the first place, leading to all these efforts being for naught. However, despite all of these flaws, a media movement remains the most plausible as well as the best solution, which is perfectly encapsulated by this quote from Tristan Harris, a design ethicist for Google, who, while on The Social Dilemma, says that it's not about technology being the existential threat. It's technology's ability to bring out the worst in society being the existential threat. This quote is supposed to give us hope. There is no AI overlord. Unrealistic expectations aren't a crucial part of aren't a crucial part of social media. Rather, it's all user-generated content. And it's those same users who, if they choose to promote vulnerability and accept others who are different from themselves, that can stop rising youth suicide rates from falsified ideals online. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan. So, Ethan, was there information um, that you needed that you weren't able to find? And how did you go about trying to find that information? Um, I believe I found everything I needed, but there was one source that I would have really liked, which was an implications of the negative effects of having everybody in society telling truths on social media. Um, what I did to find this was go on Consensus, on Google, on EBSCO, and Google social media's effects if everybody told the truth. I found several sites such as the K-Lotha one I cited, but none of them were directly talking about what happened if everybody was telling the truth on social media. I feel as if though that would have helped me build a better con section but in the end, I think it was okay. All right, thank you. And then, how does your conclusion respond to any of the other research or sources that you looked at? Yeah, so initially, when I was looking for a problem, I found a bunch of different problems about social media. In the end, I decided on unrealistic expectations. However, there were a bunch of other sources arguing for things like desensitization. It was the social media company's fault. But my conclusion about unrealistic expectations and the need for vulnerability was quite different from most other sources. And I chose this one because, as Ted Thomas had said, users are very important in all movement. They need moral courage. And I responded to those other research sources by specifically talking about users. Okay, thank you.